next year is not a depression. Next year's it's going to be straight down and straight back up. You know, it's going to be a V, but it's going to be while you're in it, it's going to feel like a depression. Um, and, you know, I think you can have an 80% decline in the stock market, you know, an 80% bear market from the peak. So if we get 7,000 on the S and P, it can fall to 1400. And again, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be precise, but I mean, that's just to give you an idea of what I'm talking. Today, we are diving deep into a gripping prediction that could shake up the way we think about our investments. David Hunter, a prominent macro strategist at Contrarian Macro Advisors, has made a bold and alarming forecast. An impending crash of at least 80% in the stock market and an unprecedented economic downturn. But here's the twist. Hunter believes that this crash could also present a unique opportunity for those who know where to invest. Let's unravel Hunter's chilling predictions, explore the potential fallout, and discover which assets might just be your ticket to wealth when everything else is falling apart. That is the hardest question that I can't answer. And my fear is because this is global. I mean, we'll mm -hmm. see. You know, the global collapse, sovereign debt is going to prove itself to be not safe. You know, you can have you can have bankrupt governments. Um, as I say, and again, this is totally just trying to paint a picture of from a seat of the pants. But we could possibly see in this country 50 percent plus unemployment with a bankrupt government. That means no welfare system, no unemployment compensation very limited if any social security or medicare you know basically everybody fending for themselves trying to trying to survive uh and again it will be something similar around the world i think mm -hmm. and so what comes out of that i fear totalitarianism but who knows i mean maybe we maybe we do somewhere along the line come out of the ashes and and start the whole game over with you know a more a gold-based uh, system and you know learn our lesson and don't do it but to get from here to there is going to be extreme extreme pain in my opinion so our journey begins in early august when the market took a nosedive that left many investors in a state of panic hunter points to several key triggers for this sell-off first a reversal in the yen carry trade an investment strategy that involves borrowing in low interest rate currencies and investing in higher yielding ones, causing a ripple effect through the global markets. Next disappointing job numbers are the Federal Reserve's unexpected decision to hold off on cutting interest rates contributed to a market retreat. Major indices such as the S&P 500 and Nasdaq experienced substantial declines, with the Nasdaq suffering double-digit drops. The semiconductor sector, once a market leader, was particularly hard hit. It seemed to many that the market's peak had arrived and a chorus of bearish voices emerged. Despite the market's recovery from a low of 3,500 to over 5,600, a pervasive sense of skepticism remained. Hunter argues that this skepticism has created a wall of worry where investors, despite being bullish, are quick to revert to a bearish stance at the first sign of trouble. In such a fear-driven environment, Hunter sees a golden opportunity. He suggests that as the Federal Reserve begins to cut rates, potentially as early as the September meeting, defensive investors will be compelled to chase the market higher. There's a significant amount of cash sitting on the sidelines and many institutional portfolios are currently positioned defensively. Hunter believes that once the Fed starts easing monetary policy, this defensive positioning will shift, unleashing a wave of buying that could propel the market to new heights. Hunter's view is that while the economy is showing signs of slowing down, particularly with consumers dipping into savings and accumulating more debt, there is enough positive data to support a soft landing narrative. Inflation numbers are favorable and sectors like services remain robust. Despite struggles in manufacturing, Hunter anticipates that the market will rally as the Fed's rate cuts stimulate growth. He predicts a potential market rally of 35 to 40 percent, fueled by a combination of pent up demand and a more optimistic outlook for 2025 and 2026. 
But Hunter's optimism for the near term is sharply contrasted by his long-term pessimism. He foresees a cataclysmic economic event by late this decade or early 2030. So, Manage so expectations. the 25% inflation is, you know, late this decade, early next. So it's 2029 or 30, probably, mm. uh, maybe 31, but somewhere in there. Um, and it comes as a result of next year's bust. I'm calling for a global bust next year. And I described that as something worse than 2008-9, you know, a financial crisis that exceeds 2008-9, uh, an economy where you could see almost maybe even double digit unemployment in this country, but certainly a high single, if not uh, double. And, and um, you know, like I said, a financial crisis where you have bank failures, probably more over your way over in Europe than here, but because we had... According to Hunter, inflation could shoot up to 25% driven by a severe global economic bust expected to unfold in 2025. This bust, he argues, will be more devastating than the 2008 to 2009 financial crisis, leading to widespread unemployment and significant bank failures, particularly outside the US. Hunter believes US banks are better positioned due to lessons learned from the last crisis, but other global regions remain highly vulnerable. Hunter predicts that the central banks, including the FED, will be compelled to respond with massive monetary stimulus to counter the impending crisis. Initially, these banks may resist quantitative easing. But as the crisis deepens and the bank failures spread globally, they will have no choice but to flood the system with liquidity. Hunter foresees that the FED could inject up to $20 trillion into the economy a move that will likely lead to significant inflation. The influx of money is expected to stabilize the financial system, but also create a storm of inflationary pressures. So, you know, our balance sheet got up to 9 trillion. We we, we blew you know, we blew it up by 5 trillion back in the pandemic back in 2020-21. We're going to see four times that in my opinion. And proportionally around the world, all the central banks will be doing similar, uh, not the same numbers, but proportionally. And so you will have money coming out of everywhere and being matched by fiscal. You know, we'll be issuing new treasury debt like crazy to match that and they'll monetize it um, with a lag initially. And the reason they'll be doing that is to try to, you know, stop a free falling system. Um, the lag to when that turns into inflation is probably 18 months or more so to, into any kind of serious inflation because we'll be in deflation next year i think mm -hmm. next year is going to be you know once you hit this bust it's going to take us into deflation the massive liquidity injection will have a delayed impact on inflation according to hunter there will be a lag of about 18 months before this liquidity translates into noticeable inflation in the meantime, the economy might face deflation as the system adjusts to the new reality. However, by the second half of 2026 or early 2027, inflation could surge to higher single digits and potentially exceed 20% by 2030. Hunter explains that the central bank's ability to print money will be limited by this lag, causing them to initially focus on stabilizing the system rather than managing inflation. As a result, inflation will eventually spike, driven by the enormous amount of money pumped into the economy. He believes that from a peak level of around 7,000 on the S&P 500, the index could plummet to 1,400. This dramatic drop will be accompanied by a severe beer market, characterized by widespread asset devaluation and a potential increase in unemployment rates. So. Where does Hunter see opportunity amidst this chaos? He highlights a specific asset class that he believes will not only weather the storm but also offer significant returns. According to Hunter, commodities will play a crucial role in the coming economic upheaval. As central banks print massive amounts of money, Hunter anticipates a surge in commodity prices. For instance, he projects that oil could rise to $500 by the end of the decade, while copper could increase significantly from its current levels. So, what's for investors? Hunter's most compelling recommendation is gold. 
He believes that gold will be a vital asset during this tumultuous period. Gold, which is currently priced around $2,500, could potentially reach $20,000 by the end of the decade. Similarly, silver with its industrial applications is expected to see significant price increases, potentially reaching $500. But what happens between now and 2025 to these precious metals? Listen to David carefully. What happens in the what happens between now and 2025 to precious metals? Um, okay, I think this year, and it can spill into the first part of next year, I have um, a target on my gold of 3000 mm. I'm likely to raise that by several hundred dollars. Uh, I think it's conservative at this point, given that gold's at $2,500. Um, my silver call is $75. I, it had been 60 I raised that in my last letter. So I think um, silver can go to 75 let's say between now and the end of the first quarter um and gold to you know three thousand i wouldn't be surprised if it's you know several hundred dollars higher than that in the bust hunter advises that while gold and silver will likely experience volatility they will ultimately serve as crucial hedges against inflation and economic instability during the expected market crash and subsequent recovery these precious metals could offer substantial returns to investors who hold them through the downturn. As we navigate through this predicted market crash, Hunter expects a robust commodity cycle to follow. We will see a commodity cycle following the bus. So in you know beginning in 26, probably later 26, and all the way through the balance of the decade you could take oil to $500. I think oil next year can get to $30, but by the end of the decade, it could be at 500. Um, copper could get down, I'm calling for copper this year at six, could get down to a buck in, you know, somewhere near a buck in the bust. And then by the end of the decade, could be, you know, 20 or 30. David anticipates that commodities like oil and copper will experience dramatic price swings initially falling during the crisis, but eventually surging as demand outpaces supply. This cycle will be driven by the massive influx of liquidity and a shift towards reindustrialization and reshoring of industries. Hunter's advice comes with caution. Investing during such extreme volatility requires attention. While he believes in the potential of commodities, gold and silver, he warns that these assets will experience significant ups and downs. Investors should be prepared for substantial fluctuations and should consider a strategic approach to buying and holding these assets. So I think they'll get hit hard if the stock markets hit 80% and silver drops 70%, you've outperformed, but it's a it's a big hit, right? Yeah. So, and I don't know that it'll come that far. It might only go 50, but uh, it's not something that you can um, just buy and hold and say, I'm not worried about the bust. I think you're going to be very upset if you just kind of sit there. And as I say, it's by like, volatility. It's kind of, it's kind of like standing on the South Rim of the Grand Canyon and looking across to the North Rim and thinking you can straight walk straight across. And there's this canyon in between that you don't want to ignore. Finally, Hunter addresses the potential responses from governments and central banks. He acknowledges that extreme measures, such as modern monetary theory, may be attempted to mitigate the crisis. However, he is skeptical about their effectiveness, predicting that the scale of the crisis will surpass the capacity of current policy tools. Hunter foresees a period of severe economic pain, potentially leading to high unemployment, bankrupt governments, and a breakdown of social safety nets. This bleak outlook could lead to a reconfiguration of the global economic system, possibly ushering in a new era of financial and economic practices. As we wrap up this exploration of David Hunter's predictions, it's clear that we are facing a potentially unprecedented economic storm. While his forecast of an 80% market crash and severe inflation paints a grim picture, it also highlights significant investment opportunities. For those willing to navigate the volatility, Commodities and precious metals may offer a lifeline during the coming crisis. Hunter's predictions underline the importance of staying informed and prepared. 
As always, it is crucial to conduct your own research and consult with financial advisors before making investment decisions. The future may be uncertain, but with the right strategies and foresight, you can position yourself to not only survive, but potentially thrive in the face of economic upheaval. Thank you for tuning in. If you found this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more updates on financial trends and investment strategies. Stay safe, stay informed, and see you in the next video.